The oldest publicly available sample of Vibrio cholerae has been sequenced, and the sequence analysis shows that this um, previous sample is more closely related, potentially, to non-cholera Vibrio than to Vibrio cholerae. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, century-old cholera edition. I'm Julie Wolf, and today we will be discussing a paper from the Proceedings of the Royal Society B, which reveals that a 100-year-old cholera isolate offers insight into pathogen evolution. Now, Vibrio cholerae is well known for its ability to cause diarrheal disease, and the diarrhea that it causes is very voluminous and extremely watery. Uh, those are characteristics of cholera specifically. And there have been seven cholera pandemics uh, around the world since the early 1800s. We are currently in our seventh pandemic, uh, which started in 1961 and is caused by the El Tor lineage, uh, which is slightly um, slightly uh, dissimilar from the Vibrio cholera classical lineage, but those are all species of cholera. Now, in this study, the researchers wanted to look at NCTC30, which was the 30th bacterial isolate deposited within the uh, National Collection of Type Cultures, an institution that holds on to different bacterial and microbial isolates. Uh, and this particular isolate was taken from a British soldier in World War I. So World War I, 100 years ago, was concurrent with the sixth pandemic of cholera. And during that time, uh, all sorts of troops were worried that their troops would con contract cholera and that it would spread among the troops and disable them, uh, per spreading throughout the entire platoon or battalion. Uh, and so what the... Um, what happened was this soldier uh, contracted what looked like cholera, but it didn't really spread. It didn't act as typical as cholera often does. Uh, and so this group wanted to study the genome and see if we could see anything that might discern why it was acting a little bit apparently. Uh, and so in the next slide, we'll see that they took the whole genome sequence and compared NCTC30 to not only other Vibrio cholera um, species, but also to other Vibrio species. So there's a number of different marine microorganisms in the Vibrio genus, uh, some of which can cause human disease and some of which are innocuous to human beings. And you can see that the NCT does cluster with other Vibrio cholerae species. So if we look at panel A on the uh, left-hand side here, NCTC is grouped with the Vibrio cholerae. Uh, if you look actually at the bottom, those are both phylogenetic maps. The top one, A, is unrooted and the bottom one is rooted. You can see that the NCTC does group with the Vibrio cholerae, but that it is uh, very far, um, uh, it, it is the furthest relative or, or almost closest relative, I guess a better way to say, uh, to some of these other Vibrio species. Um, they saw that there was an inversion of a large part of the chromosome, of uh, chromosome 1, um, and they then looked at the microbe itself. And when they looked at the microbe, which they had revived from culture, uh, they saw that the bacterium had impaired flagella production, so it wasn't modal in the same way that Vibrio cholerae often is. Uh, they saw that it was resistant to beta-lactams, uh, and the, that is shown at the very bottom there, looking at the MICs. Uh, the minimal inhibitory concentration of drug against E. coli, which is susceptible, and you can see a large ring, um, and the Vibrio cholera uh, NCTC30, which grows to a much higher concentration. And that's of note because 1918, uh, when this strain was taken, was before, I believe, penicillin was discovered in the 20s uh, and wasn't really put into mass production until maybe World War II era, so, so 40s, uh, when it started to be used a little more commonly. So this is likely something that had evolved independent of human use of different um, beta-lactams, which are the, the penicillin type of uh, antibiotics. They also noted that the NCTC lacks a phage, um, the cholera toxin phage, that normally encodes the cholera toxin genes uh, and confers that extreme wateriness to the diarrhea. However, they did see that there was a type 3 secretion system. This is an injectosome of sort that allows the bacteria to um, inject or secrete proteins directly into uh, a, a another cell. Uh, and in this case, uh, they saw that the type 3 secretion system, the genes for this, were a little more close in sequence to not Vibrio cholera, but a related species called uh, Vibrio parahemolyticus. Those, plus the presence of other toxins, 
indicate that this isolate is a potential pathogen and can cause diarrhea in a patient. But would it actually look like cholera? Would it be choleric diarrhea, that, that voluminous sort? Uh, that is a little hard to tell without more medical records, but it may explain why this patient, this soldier, um, came down with what looked like cholera, but it didn't act in total um, as expected, completely as expected. So this was written up in several places. On the next slide, we'll see that, um, of course, because of its historical importance, it was written up in um, a place interested in history, the Smithsonian. Uh, and they quoted the senior scientist, Nick Thompson, saying that even though the isolate did not cause an outbreak, it is important to study those that do not cause disease as well as those that do. <clears throat> Hence, this isolate represents a significant uh, piece of history of cholera, a disease that remains important today, uh, as important today as it was in the past. This was also written up in a press release, which was picked up by phys.org, which quoted first author Matthew Dorman, saying that reports in the literature indicated that this was, there was something unusual about the strain of bacteria from the World War I soldier. It's promising to see that our genomic information aligns with those historical records. Uh, and finally, Julie Russell, who is the head of the culture collection at NCTC, uh, stated that studying these bacteria offers a window into the past and helps scientists to understand how bacteria evolve over time and the roles that they've played uh, in history. So in summary, sequencing has shown that a 100-year-old cholera isolate lacks some of the genes necessary to cause cholera, uh, although it could potentially still cause other types of diarrheal diseases. If you want to get more updates, go ahead and subscribe to uh, join us in future Microbial Minutes sessions. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Rio Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.